welcome to Motorsport on 4 from Brands Hatch. We're at the 8th round of the 13 that make up the Power Tour Series and in Formula 3, Takuma Sato has taken a commanding lead over Derek Hayes. While in the GT Championship, Mike Jordan and Dave Warnock have eked out a small lead, while in GTO, Kelvin Burt and Marino Franchitti have a slightly more comfortable one. Later in the programme, I'll be talking to two of the lesser lights in the championship. But first, a quick look back at the Formula 3s from Castle Coombe. The Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit is certainly one of the most difficult circuits in Britain and I have to say it's a particular favourite of mine. The most challenging corner on the circuit is this one, Dingle Dell. We approach Dingle Dell, exiting Westfield behind me, steeply downhill in fourth gear in the GT car, up to fifth, climbing steeply uphill. The entry to Dingle Dell is blind. You have to guesstimate where to brake, where to turn in and aim for this kerb on the right hand side, getting very close to it but not taking too much of the kerb. If you do take too much of the kerb, it tends to launch the car over to the left-hand side where there's another kerb and the gravel trap is very close. It has been the scene of many accidents if you get that wrong. And now let me take you around a complete lap from the driver's point of view. Right, so here we are, the beginning of another lap of the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit with Jensen Button in 1999. Pit straight, pits on the right-hand side across the start and finish line, climbing uphill to Paddock Bend down one gear to fourth, we're also in fourth in the GT Porsche, dropping steeply downhill into the compression and approaching Druids, second gear hairpin. A lot of understeer mid corner for Jensen, that's normal for that corner. Second gear, third gear, dropping sharply downhill, approaching Graham Hill, a third gear, 90 degree left hander. Just a touch of the curve on the exit, up to fourth. Now approaching Surtees, a very difficult and critical corner on the Grand Prix circuit. Braking and turning at the same time, and early throttle, very important for straight line speed. We're now on the main straight, Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit, fourth gear, fifth gear, now dropping steeply downhill, we're in sixth gear in the Porsche here. Very short braking just before the fastest corner, Hawthorns. Taken in fifth gear by Jensen, still in fifth gear, approaching Westfield, another difficult corner bumpy just there at the apex and you see very little runoff on the left hand side now the curved and blind approach to Dingle Dell down one gear just touching the curve very bumpy there on the left hand side and very quickly we arrive at Stirlings a banked 90 degree left hander third fourth very quickly now dropping downhill again fourth gear approaching clearways very bumpy at the apex bit of steering correction dropping downhill and catching the guy in front it's the start of another race lap for Jensen Button. The British Formula 3 scene's always been a cosmopolitan affair, but this year, apart from Andre Lotter at Jaguar, there are only two other Europeans in the championship class. There's Jimmy Bruni in his second season with Fortec, and the French rookie Bruce Wanney with the Promotechni UK team. Recently, their fortunes have fluctuated, with Jimmy's season going off the boil and Bruce's getting better and better. Well, the goal for the first part was uh, effectively to achieve like in the place, stay in the, keep, keep my place around 6th and 5th, which we nearly achieved. And for the second part of the season, obviously the goal is to make a podium or maybe a Q1, uh, which won't be easy because it's a very competitive championship. But uh, we are working hard and it doesn't look too bad. For a driver, how important is it in your second year of F3 to get results? Yeah, a lot, a lot. Uh, definitely it's not come from me, it's nothing about me. Um, I don't know what I need to do more. Uh, I drove better than the beginner, or same, equal, and uh, the results just go down. And uh, in F3, 
like 80% of their soul is just you need engine good and uh, mapping everything I'm sure we go back and uh, we have a program that we we try to to keep on working with my engineer Chris Weller uh, we both together work very hard on the setup and see what we, we can improve uh, especially at St. Anton, which is our test track and We'll see. We, I can't tell <laughs> what we're going to do on the car, but we have a few ideas to, to make it better, to improve. I don't want to stop. I want to just win race and win the championship. Obviously, now it's a little bit difficult, but I can. I don't. I want. You know. I don't. I don't rest. I don't want to stop. And to find out how these guys got on in qualifying here at Brands, it's over to Ben and Martin. Well, unfortunately, Brands brought no great success for either driver. Joanny just scraped into the top ten, while Bruni was two places further back. Takuma Sato was on pole the day after driving VAR's Formula One car at Goodwood. It's just uh, yesterday, but just a fun, you know, make make um, you know spectator, you know, keep happy. And I did a big smoke, big ride. It's just you know working the car, you know, just enjoying. And uh, fortunately, break the course record, which is uh, you know very happy. Determined to keep his championship challenge alive, Derek Hayes held off the Jaguar pair to take second place. James Courtney claimed third for Jaguar despite a bizarre problem. It's a bit difficult to drive because they put the gears in the wrong way. I think they mistakenly put fourth where fifth was and fifth where fourth was. So I sort of had a weird gear changing pattern, but it took me a while to get used to it. We got used to it in the end, and I suppose third isn't too bad with that. Surprise of the session, the pace of Paul Edwards, fifth fastest despite this indiscretion at Paddock. The only man really to suffer was Sato's teammate Anthony Davidson, languishing in ninth after a major accident at Westfield during testing. After his double retirement at Castle Coon, scholarship runner Inani Judis was hoping for better. He dropped, though, from third to fifth after an off at the infamous single Dell. That left the top three in the points, qualifying at the front, with Robbie Kerr on pole position. In the championship class, Sato and Hayes on the front row lead the Jaguar twins, with Paul Edwards and Jamie Spence the best of the rest. In scholarship, behind Kerr, Kiohan and Gilmore, Kazuki Hoshino took fourth, then Judas and Partiva Surishwaran was in sixth. So with the two points leaders, Derek Hayes and Takuma Sato taking the top two positions of the grid, there's no surprise there. But who would bet against Takuma Sato starting from pole position? Ben and Martin have the answer. Yes indeed, Sato on pole, but right at the back of the other end of the grid, Michael Kyohan, scholarship front runner, lost his qualifying times with a wing infringement after practice, so he's got a lot of work to do. Ready to go, the revs rise, the five second board is on, lights are on, away there, oh Sato! Sato has stopped at the front of the grid, everybody else gets away around him, yellow flags waving furiously, will they all make it safely by the championship points leader? They do, but what a disaster for Takuma Sato, I just said that Kyohan was starting at the back, but now Sato will be right at the back. On board with Anthony Davidson, his teammate, and a bit of wheel banging going on there. Who was that? That was Mark Taylor on his inside. Somebody off a paddock. Oh dear, Ben, this is not looking good. No, it looks like we've got several cars off. In fact, Harold Freemax off badly damaged, uh, but maybe just on his own. Let's, we're back with the lead battle. Paul Edwards being chased by Anthony Davidson for fourth position. Well, Davidson got the line wrong there, heading off into the country. It's Hayes from the Jaguar drivers. There's James Courtney, we ride with him now, and water on the camera lens, well it was looking a bit cold and gloomy uh, the, this morning, and now it's very slippery indeed, and as you can see his hands moving on the steering, this is into the lap of the gods really, Ben, on slick tyres, and Courtney making a mistake there, Andre Lotter, his teammate, trying to capitalise. Great battles going on, and you could really see the cars moving around, the track is a little bit damp, the tyres are cold, and the drivers are working very hard to keep them under control. Robbie Kerr further back at the lead of this big bunch in scholarship, under pressure, on board with Paul Edwards. Through Sterling's band, all oh, nearly loses it. The front end started to slide, and as he got off the gas, the back end went as well. He sorted it out beautifully well, and Paul Edwards coming down into clear. Oh, and Anthony Davidson's come through, so he goes into fourth place from ninth on the grid. Oh, and further back, there's an accident. That's Adam Blair in the middle of the track, and on the left, Partiva Surishwaran. Mark Mayles spins right at the 
far end of the straight there as well well Suresh Warren going no further and then already cars starting to litter the side of the racetrack I have a feeling this race may not get much further as it is the Jaguar pair pressing for first and second at the moment Bruni further back there is Andy Frio goes past Tom Sisley in the menu motorsport car with the black stripe Sisley a one-off race here change for ninth place but Prio may not hang on to that Sisley under pressure from behind there's Robbie Kerr the scholarship class leader bottled up behind the championship runner in front and there is Sisley's teammate now this is starting to turn into a real nightmare that's Rob Austin's car Mark Mayo Justin Sherwood was coming through there as well with damaged front end Ben on board with James Courtney talk us through coming through Sterling's corner, tight left hander gets back on the power, the yellow flag still being waved up here, so no overtaking allowed obviously on the run down into clearways, although it should be green now and that's okay, so Courtney continues his chase of race leader Derek Hayes. Well, yellow flags from the safety car board on the pit wall, Courtney puts his hand up, they'll slow down behind the safety car, the marshals can clear away the wreckage, that gives us a chance to look at the accident again. Let's take a look at Sterling's and Adam Blair appears in shot already sideways. Might have been contact with Mark Mel. Look at the cars go to the left. Blue car is Kiohan who started from the back. Partiva Suresh Warren is the one in the yellow and white car that really gets clouted into the tyres and left there for everyone else to find their way past. Ready to go racing again behind James Courtney. Out of clearways. Green flag is waving. They can overtake now if they can get close enough. Courtney just tucking the visor, snap shut again to make sure the airflow doesn't start to disrupt his vision. Mark Taylor down the inside of Jamie Spence, a good brave move at Paddock Hill Bend on coolish tyres, particularly with the low ambient temperature. Didn't quite get it done, but he survived at least the move. Jamaria Bruni right behind him. There's Jamie in the light green Duma racing car, Mark Taylor. And there is Andy Frio and Robbie Kerr well up now, Ben. He's really starting to carve up the order yeah, talking of carving up through the order, watch out for Takuma Tato. He's also making a bit of progress. There he is, just popping into shot. He dropped right to the back of the grid, remember, after that dreadful start from pole position, but he might get some points, and we've got somebody else off. That, in fact, is his teammate, Katsuki Hoshino, into the gravel. Let's take a look at the start once again. Takuma Sato on pole, initial get away, and then stalls it. Everybody else doing a fantastic job to avoid him. Trying to get it started again. We get another view on board here with James Courtney. And take a look at this. He really had to get out of the way quickly, but it was Derek Hayes from the outside of the front row who got ahead. Great reaction from Courtney to avoid hitting the pole man there as well. And Sato now working his way up through the order, chasing Bruce Giuani over the chicane at Dingledale. They really fly through there. Down the inside, deals with Giuani very expertly indeed. Next up is Alex Gurney. And Derek Hayes still leads, pulling away now from Courtney, who is still under pressure from Lotra. Dives to the inside, sold the dummy to Courtney, but a little too early, I think. Anthony Davidson really watching perfectly from behind. Will he go up the inside at Druids? No. Still sees the Jaguar drivers sparring with each other. Andre Lotra knows, though, if he makes a rash move and takes off James Courtney, he better start walking in the opposite direction to the pits. Boss Bruce Jenkins wouldn't be very happy with that, Ben, would he? He wouldn't, indeed. Interestingly, looking at the top four cars here, Martin, they've all won a Formula 3 race this year, except for the race leader, Derek Hayes, yet to win a race in the 2001 Championship, but he's driving superbly here. He's been such a consistent point scorer, it's really surprising that he hasn't yet won a race, but as you say, Courtney has won his first win for Jaguar, was Jaguar's first ever single-seater win. Lotra has won too. Anthony Davidson on a fine rash of form at the moment. Of course, Takuma Sato has won the lion's share, and, well, I don't think he's going to win this one, but there's always race two. Davidson and Carlin Motorsport really seem to have the pace. What about this? Can he get past the Jaguars? Oh, he got a bit sideways. There's a mistake from Davidson there. Gets into trouble, gets back onto the track, and he is passed immediately by Paul Edwards. No great surprise. And that's a great shame because Davidson's been putting together a good race up to that point. Curse of the commentator strikes again. Sorry, Anthony. Off goes Tom Sisley. That's at Dingle Dell. That's the end of his debut in Formula 3. On to the last lap now for Derek Hayes. Still got the Jaguar drivers in podium positions, but not looking able to challenge. Sato right behind fellow race winner Andy Frio. This is for ninth place. It'll be a couple of points. Trying to have a look into Paddock Hill Bend. It doesn't quite come off there. Up the hill towards Druids. Now, if you can get up the inside, a good opportunity. 
Rio has that well covered, so Tatsumo is forced to go wide on the entrance, and it's not very easy to go around the outside of somebody at the hairpin. There are several overtaking opportunities here at Brands Hatch Bend, but everybody knows where they are. Druid, Paddock Hill Bend, Sutter's so going to have to be very inventive, and he is! What a great move! You don't often see that one pay off because you go off camber as you come round the corner and out into the country. Great stuff at Surtees. Meanwhile, Dennis Russian keeping an eye on his charge. Derek Hayes, as he looks for his first win of the season. It's about time too. He's been fast all year, but it's about time that he converted that speed into victory. Now, look at the steering wheel. On board James Courtney on the left there. The speed, 110 miles an hour through Dingle Dell chicane. Builds up a bit, breaks again for Sterling. And we're down to around 80 miles an hour through the left-hander. Picking up speed again down under the bridge and into clearways for the final time. 170 miles an hour through there in a Turbo Grand Prix car. A little bit less in a Formula 3 car, but right on the edge again. Across the line on the Brabham Straight. There is victory number one in the championship for Derek Hayes. And here is the points leader. Takuma Sato will come home behind Bruni in ninth. Derek Hayes the winner then from James Courtney, Andre Lothra, Paul Edwards taking fourth ahead of Davidson and Mark Taylor. Robbie Kerr never headed in the scholarship class, but from the back of the grid, Michael Kyohan scoring good points for fifth. What can I say at last? Um, you know, car was super and the whole race, it was just like, I could like up the pace one lap and slow back the next and I'm really, really happy. So I've waited so long this season, I've got many to pole position, but you know, my first win, I'm just over the moon. We said yesterday we thought we could get the car quicker, and today we have um, the 20.1, which is three tenths faster than what we did in qualifying, so we've got to be happy with that. Well, round 15 gave us a truly exciting race. Can round 16 be as exciting? Find out in a couple of minutes in Motorsport on 4. <laughs> The weather played its role in qualifying for round 16 at Brands Hatch. The track drying after light rain meant that the best times would come late on. Anthony Davidson put his problems behind him. He was fastest until the very end of the session. Then James Courtney, strong throughout, grabbed pole by a fifth of a second. The rain was changing this last corner clearways every lap. And uh, it's really exciting. You never knew what it was going to be like. He could do a really decent lap, come to the last corner, and you think, God, how's he going to be? Local man Mark Taylor pushed Takuma Sato out of third place at the death. So, yeah, same again though, a little bit of rain and it suits me down to the ground. So yeah, hopefully this time it'll be a bit better in the race other than rocking him uh, my little boo-boo. <laughs> by the time of the scholarship session, the track was dry and Robbie Kerr demonstrated his ability by qualifying in 11th, faster than six of the championship runners. Markedly quicker than any of the other guys out there. What are you doing? I don't really know, to be honest, but I hope it carries on for tomorrow. Second and third were the same as in race one, Kiahan and Gilmore, but the mistake at Dingledale this time was down to Kazuki Hoshino. So you're confident that you can fix it? Yeah, I think so. From what I can see at the moment, she'll be fine. And is he all right? Yes, he's fine. He's getting shaken up, but it's not that fast there, so he's, he's fine. In the championship class, a first pole position for James Courtney ahead of Davidson and Taylor. Sato in fourth, another good result for Paul Edwards. Lotter's Jag in sixth. Behind the same top three in scholarship, Judas was fourth with Robert Dornbos next up and Surish Warren again in sixth. This is Paddock Hill Bends, one of the greatest corners in motor racing. You can expect overtaking here on any lap in the race, but winning the drag race from the start down there to here is absolutely crucial. Find out who gets it right with Martin and Ben. James Courtney on his first ever pole position in Formula 3. Let's see whether he can get it right. Yes, we saw from his viewpoint what Sato's start was like in the first race here. Let's hope he can do a better job. But the downhill pole position, notoriously hard to get away from. And Davidson lined up to follow him down behind Mark Taylor in third place. Great start by him, but Sato around the outside doesn't worry about the others, just looks at the corner ahead, takes the lead as Davidson in fourth place behind Taylor. And look at the way Courtney was fighting him for the inside line into Druids. Courtney desperate to hold on and from behind. Davidson spun round a cloud of tyre smoke. Oh my goodness. That is Jamie Spence on top of him, or on front of his nose at any rate. And that's bad news indeed for Davidson. And I wonder if the safety cars will be out again for that one. They head out into the country and there's a big confusion behind. But Spence and Davidson out of the race.
great disappointment that because Davidson had made a good start there and he got punted from behind no doubt about it up front though what about Takuma Sato's start from fourth position and we're back with his teammate once again Anthony Davidson the field has disappeared into the countryside so he really hasn't got much chance of working his way up the order here so what he could do is maybe score the single point for fastest lap Takuma Sato got that plus two for finishing ninth in the first race and of course they're battling each other point against point for the championship through go the top six Andre Lotra in eighth trying desperately to get past Andy Prio as Spencer's car is wheeled away so there'll be no safety car here Trevor Carlin on the pit wall talking on the radio and uh, discussing with the team the tactics for Davidson which are to go fast he's just set fast his lap and off he goes on the grass showing how hard he's trying to set another one well then let's look back at that uh, Druid's Bend then yeah, we're taking a look here, and if we whip left, we see Davidson, who has been hit by somebody just getting into a spin here. Now, but further behind, I think it's Robbie Kerr runs into the back of Jamie Spence, and it's Spence who spins round and ends up perched on top of Davidson's car. So Robbie Kerr, the scholarship winner from the first race, let's hope that he hasn't got any damage in this one. Another replay from on board with Paul Edwards. Davidson went round the outside of Mark Taylor. That's where the initial contact came, and that's what spun him round. In the red headset there is Alan Docking, that's Paul Edwards' team boss, and the boss of Andy Prio as well, who's in seventh place here with Andre Lotter behind. In front of them, Bruce Giovanni, the yellow car, race one winner, Derek Hayes in sixth place. They're dropping away from the front runners. So two of this pair, local boy Mark Taylor and Paul Edwards, they're third and fourth. And they obviously haven't got the speed to stay with the men out front either. Jaguar Pitt holding out a sign to Andre Lotter here. He's in eighth place, needs to do a little bit better as he comes up towards Paddock Hill Bend and he goes down the inside this time of Andy Prio, classic piece of overtaking at Brands Hatch, grabs the inside line, is able to cover up to Druids and he takes that position. Well, I think he must have caught Prio napping there because he tried that move several times on James Courtney in race one and Courtney saw Lotra coming every time. On board with Anthony Davidson coming up to Hawthorns. Now he's on a very quick lap here, let's just watch him, very fast section of the track, that's great stuff, up to Westfield now back on the power very quickly you can hear the commitment there there's no feathering of the throttle he's straight back on it car in front into Dingle Dell that cost him time through there there's no doubt the car in front slowed him now he's got to get back on the power here through Sterling a little bit of curve you can see how hard he's trying because the car is flicking around on the exit of all these corners and he's using every inch of available space well, for Davidson now, every lap is like a qualifying lap. He has to keep going. It's no good just setting one fast lap. He has to keep trying to set the fastest lap all the way through until the very end. Mark Mayo crawls into the pits. Looks as though he's destined for retirement. He crashed in race one. Pretty tough weekend for him. Robbie Kerr leads the scholarship class, though, and he's in 11th place overall. I expect Davidson will be soon catching him as well. Very quick through paddocks there, and he's some seven seconds ahead of his nearest rival in the class, Michael Kierhan, as we turn our attention back to race leader, Takuma Sato. Sato lapping Peter Nielsen towards the end of the race now. Sato making a good start this time, avoided the front three, didn't even look at them, just aimed for Paddock Hill Bend and made the use of his great getaway to control the race from the front. And he's put in an extra fast lap as we get towards the end here. He snatched that fastest lap point away from Anthony Davidson. So Davidson's efforts, I'm afraid, have been in vain. Well, tough luck for Anthony being in the team with the fastest driver out on the track as he's trying to get that point to battle him in the championship. The Carlin team studying the times. But what about Sato's start, Ben? Was it fair? He's on fourth position on the grid on the right-hand side. Let's take a look at it as they all get away. They all get away at about the same time, I have to say. Sato then cuts to the outside. Oh, what a brilliant getaway it was. And he had them pass before they turned into Paddock Bend. And once you let Takuma Sato out front, that's about all that you need to do because he will run on to win. Sato leading on the last lap from Mark Taylor, whose dad used to be the champion of brands in Formula Fords. He's obviously inherited the Brands Hatch speed gene from his old man. Sato, don't know where his speed came from, but it's certainly all too evident here at Brands Hatch. He takes the chequered flag in race two, victory and a commanding one once more from the championship leader. A brilliant performance from the Japanese driver and Robbie Kerr coming through to win again in the scholarship class. Maximum points including one for fastest lap for Takuma Sato and championship rival Derek Hayes could fare no better than sixth. Second straight win of the day for Robbie Kerr and extending his lead over nearest rival Matthew Gilmore who was only in fourth. Yeah, I made a really good start. Um, I played really, just uh, quite comfortable. 
the crowd was uh, very handle uh, handling was quite good, very durable. A little bit disappointing first race, that's why I really wanted to make a good start, so that's why fantastic. I initially got up the line, line all right, then I saw Sasu coming and then Taylor, so I tried to not slip the clutch so much and fly a little bit more gas, and then I just had massive wheel spin and come back with second. It wasn't wasn't good enough today. Takuma Sato now has a 50-point lead over Derek Hayes. James Courtney closes to 13 on the second place, man. Anthony Davidson languishing in fourth. Robbie Kerr now leads Gilmore by 16 points, while Kiahan does better than Castle Coombe, male scoring nothing in fourth. So Ben, 16 races down, just nine left to go. What about the state of the championship? Well, there's no doubt that Takuma Sato is the dominant driver we expected him to be. Seven wins out of those 16 starts and a 50-point lead, but a mistake today when we saw him stall from pole position in the first race. He said afterwards he didn't have enough revs, but basically a little lapse in concentration didn't quite get it right with the clutch. They are quite fierce on the Formula 3 cars, and he had to make up ground as a result. A very impressive recovery drive, but Derek Hayes taking his first win of the season, as we said earlier, about time too, and he was very thankful to Manor Motorsport for that. So many congratulations to Takuma Sato, but also to Derek Hayes. Those valuable points keeping his championship hopes alive. Now time to turn our attention to the mighty GTs and a quick look back at the last round from Castle Coombe. GT grid has been a bit thin of late, but there are real signs of a strong resurgence of interest with cars from Porsche and Marcos. But two stalwarts who have been there all year long battling against the odds are the Ultima and the Quake. Colin, you've taken the unconventional route, you've chosen the Ultima. Why didn't you go and buy a Viper or a Lister or something else? Well, first of all, everybody told me that the Ultima would never work. So there's a challenge straight away. But no, joking apart, honestly, I believe that the Ultima will work I think it has great potential simply because the engine is in the back of the car, yeah. it's a very small car, it, it literally is as small as you could ever make a GT, there's enough room in there for the engine, enough room for the gearbox, there's enough room for a driver and that is it. Mike, you've got the four-wheel drive Quaife, now was that a choice based on the English weather or was it to promote your company? I think it was basically very beach actually, I yeah. mean the weather has been lately, it's been really wet and we thought well, sometimes with this English weather you can have any advantage because we can still run in the wet and we're slick so we wouldn't have to come in and change over but the way it's going at the moment, uh, well we're just not getting out at all, we're in run of bad luck really. You know, I, I always said right from day one that this year would be very much a, a learning year and a development year. Uh, it's just been a little bit worse than I expected, actually. Yeah, there's a lot more to come from it, more testing, development. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not getting time to do it, so if you feel like you want to have a drive and <laughs> do the build well for me, you're welcome. But. Well, we look forward to seeing you up there. Unfortunately, there was little joy for the Quave team at Brands. They broke a rocker in practice and didn't dare run the engine before rebuilding it first. The Ultima finished 9th in GT, 19th overall, but at least it was running. Except for Michael Caine's minor indiscretion at Jewett's, there were no great surprises at the sharp end of the grid. It finished Lister, Viper and TVR in that order. The car was brilliant in testing yesterday. Uh, Jamie came down and did some setup work with us and the three of us were very, very pleased with the car. David's right on the money as well. So um, We think we're getting a bit of understeer, but we think we're getting our car back which started to go wrong around about croft level and we think we're 
teasing it back in there now. We've obviously always got a good chance with, with Bobby going well as well, and the car's good when it's working, so, um, yeah, I don't know, it looks like it's going to rain now anyway, so uh, just hope that safety car doesn't come and see us tomorrow. <laughs> good to see the two MTK Marcuses back at Brands Hatch and already providing some entertainment. Robin Liddell and Jeff Lister put their markers on the second row, just under a second behind the TVR with that fastest time. Jeff and myself are quite evenly matched, so, you know, we're quite a strong pairing, I feel, and uh, if we can just improve the car a little bit more, I feel we'll definitely be on the podium. Then Callum Lockie. The champion was back with Dave Welps in the Porsche. In the GTA class, battle was rejoined between Porsche and TVR. This time, Martin Short's TVR came out on top, Kelvin Burt, three tenths back in second. Well, it wasn't a perfect lap. I think the car can do a 27. Um, and we're close enough, there's only three tenths difference. So we know in the race we'll be closer. In fifth behind the second TVR, the Harlow Porsche. Terry Ryman was glad to be back in business. Yeah, I'm here this weekend at Brands, my local, my local racetrack, and uh, I've got about 75 guests coming down, so uh, it's a big race for me. So. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not really a qualifier, I'm a racer. And when I get out there in the race, uh, it'll be a different story. Good to see more cars entered in the GT category at Brands Hatch, but nobody challenging the top three. Neil Cunningham and Peter Cook were eighth overall. In the GTA class, the Tuscans fight the good fight first and fourth versus the Porsches. Welcome back to Motorsport on 4 from Brands Hatch, where the mighty GT cars are about to start their race. Now, all the other races in the Powertrail series have gone back to a set number of laps, rather than working to a time limit, but not the GTs. That means that 60 minutes of racing action are about to take place. Martin and Ben are watching. Yes, and we're expecting great fun and games from these monsters on the 2.6-mile Grand Prix track, one of the driver's favourite tracks throughout the year. Brands Hatch, no longer a Grand Prix circuit, but a real beauty. The Lister and the Viper on pole, the TVR right behind with a Marcus in the mix for good measure, Callum Lockie and the Turquoise Porsche, and then the GTO field. Dave Warnock leading them very slowly to the line in the Lister Storm. Now he gets the green light, away he goes, gets the power down. He always makes a cautious start, but it looks as though he's got... No, he hasn't. Rob Wilson goes around the outside to take the lead and contact between the two of them. The Viper and the Lister spin, but they're off the track and out of the way. So, oh no, further back. Oh my goodness me. Well, there's Tim Sugden's car. There's the Ferrari, the Lotus rather. Uh, looks like everybody was off. Shane Bland making contact there with the uh, Jones Brothers Porsche as well. And I thought they got away with that then, but further back, another accident, compounding matters. Yeah, what a disappointment. That's our two, two of our three front runners out of this race already on the first lap. And Michael Kane now should have a fairly easy opportunity to open up an advantage over Callum Lockie. Well, the reigning champion might have something to say about that. He's already got past Jeff Lister in the yellow Marcus. Kelvin Burt leading us, Valence of Porsches, and off at the back, that's Ollie Wilkinson in Charlie Butler Henderson's Marcus, heavily into the barriers on the exit of Westfield. Uh, there's David Dove out of his Marcus, but the doctors attending to Dave Warnock in the list of storm, yellow flags are out. I'm sure the safety car will be scrambled now to bring the race back under control and to allow them to attend to Dave Warnock. Here's Lawrence Pierce. Yeah. Are you surprised they didn't red flag it? Well, I am, I mean, you can, uh, yeah, I'm very surprised. But then they didn't, you know, I'm very surprised at that because, you know, anything could have gone wrong. So you've just been down to see the car, there's no well, obvious... I've, I've, gone, I've gone as close as I can. Oh, it's Piers looking understandably worried there for the safety of his driver, but I think Dave Warnock is OK. The wreck lister being towed off the circuit, they're behind the safety car. What does Michael Kane have to say about it? Did the Viper and the lister touch? Uh, the Viper's gone round the outside of Warnock, and Warnock's just tried to outbreak him as well, and the boat triple salto, and um, he's just spun in front, and I've just literally clipped the back of the uh, lister as it was spinning into the gravel. But no, they didn't touch. Are you alright though? Car alright? Yeah, she's fine. The front end just caught the Viper, but I'm inside the lister, but I, was, I couldn't go anywhere, but I don't think there's any problems with the car. 
Let's take a look at the replay from on board Michael Caine's car now. Rob Wilson up on the outside of Dave Warnock. They went into Paddock Hill Bend. Warnock up on the inside. Gets on the curb a little bit and may have just knocked off the curb into the back of Wilson's car, I think. There may have just been a slight touch between them. Well, Wilson looked to have the move made. There he is. No ill effects from that. They're ready to go green flag racing again. Lizzie Everett gives them the double greens to get it underway. And Callum Lockie looking to make a move around the outside of Michael Caine. Didn't have the run down the Brabham straight to pass into Paddock. There is the pole sitter from GTO chasing up the field. Kelvin Burt making a move for third place overall on the Marcus up the inside. And up the inside there, Rob Bath in the TVR gets by Neil Cunningham in the Porsche. That TVR did not get off the line well. Remember, it was on pole position in the GTO class, but the GTO class now being led by Kelvin Bird in the Porsche, although he's under attack from the Marcus here, and in fact, is going through. Jeff Lister gets through into third place overall, but here comes Kelvin Bird back at him. Kelvin Burt still fighting with the GT class Marcus, Terry Reimer right there as well, so Kelvin had better watch his P's and Q's, Reimer knows this track very well, making a move as Michael Caine holds off Callum Lockie for the overall lead, and Lockie in the Dave Wells Porsche, when we've seen how quickly he can make that car go in any conditions, he may yet get a chance to battle Michael Caine for the victory here. Yeah, this is an impressive run once again from Callum, who hasn't raced in all the events this year, but he is the reigning champion. Well, the GTO field streams through, a little bit shaken up, I should think, by the kerfuffle at the first corner because there was a GTO crash as well with Shane Bland. Further back, there's the Ultima battling the GTO Viper, former pole sitter in that class, but they started at the back after engine problems in practice. Now, Rob Bark is bringing the GTO Tuscan into the pits. It's quite early to do that, but they're right in traffic, and I think they might try and take advantage of some clear space for Martin Short. Right at the beginning of the pit stop window as well. Let's hope they've timed that to the second, because it is all down to time, not number of laps. Terry Reimer in the Harlow car, still motors on, and in gets Martin Short, the Tuscan R. Very mean looking machine, and it's certainly got the pace to take pole and potentially win the race as well. Nice smooth change as well, that will certainly help them. Yeah, good changeover for those two. Martin Short now gets out in that car, and we'll see whether he can get past some of the Porsches. Meanwhile, here's our overall race leader, Michael Kane. Well, Kane really doing a great job in the TVR, speeding away from Callum Lockie on board with Callum. It always strikes me how cool, calm, and collected drivers look. If you're sitting in the passenger seat, you will be scared witless at the speed compared to a road car. But, oh, who's that? Somebody going off on the run up to Dingle Dell. And that is the Marcus. So Jeff Lister tapping the Marcus against the barriers, it looks as though. And uh, I'm sure he will be heading for the pits now. The pit stop window is open. Being chased by Kelvin Burt still for third overall. Michael Kane extending his advantage in the hope that they will not see a safety car during the course of the rest of the race. Yes, that's been their downfall a couple of times this year, although not last time, and TVR season really has begun to get a little better. With their two main rivals out of this race, it's a good opportunity for them to score points, and we're climbing up out of 30 onto the fastest section as into the pits comes Matt Turner. Now this is for Ed Horner to take over the Porsche, clambers into the car, belts done as quickly as possible, and then they'll send Ed Horner back out onto the track, quick check on the tyre pressures at the same time. Well, they are comfortably in the top six, battling for points here. Ed gets the car ready. Ooh, oh, I wonder if he's got a clutch problem, because then it sounds like he can't... Oh, that's horrid. Ooh. Ouch, yeah, it's painful mechanically there as he tries to get it into gear and it doesn't seem to want to. Meanwhile, into the pits comes our race leader. Yeah, race leader comes in. Callum Lockie should pass him while he's stationary, obviously, and that will give Callum Lockie the lead briefly. Michael Kane came in uh, bizarrely over the concrete right on the inside there. Callum Lockie now does take the lead of the race, and so he will motor on. Now, here comes Bobby Verdon Road to take over from Michael Kane. Look, Michael really uh, scrambling to get out of that car. It's not the easiest. Bobby Verdon Road gets himself underneath those tubes in the doorway. Now they've got to get him strapped in and get the door closed. We've seen problems earlier this year. Should have got that sorted. Very good stop this time from the TVR crew, and Bobby Verdon Road goes back out. Race leader Callum Lockie now heading down into Graham Hill Bend as the TVR, well, effectively comes the opposite direction in front of him out of the pits, and Callum Lockie again looking cool, calm and collected. Bobby Verdon Row now heading up towards Druids, this uphill approach to the hairpin. He's got the Attard and Woodford Ferrari 360 Modena right in front of him, the GTO class car. And the tail steps out as Bobby applies all of the prodigious horsepower of the Speed 12. 
the Ferrari a bit wide of the apex there, a bit aware perhaps of the race leader, former race leader coming up behind him. Bobby Burden Road goes through, and meanwhile Amanda is with Michael Kane, who's just stepped out of the car. It looked like, firstly, the Viper just went in way too fast, and he started getting the slide on, and I'm not sure whether they didn't touch, nobody touched, um, and it just looked like to me, maybe uh, Dave Warnock lifted, because then his car just went as well. GTO leader Calvin Burt, second place overall as he comes into the pits. Marino Franchitti waits to get into the car. And Calvin pulls bodily aside. A little undignified, but speed is of the essence. You can't afford to waste a single second. Bobby Verdon Rose TBR second now as he chases Terry Reimer, who's leading in front of all his guests at his favourite track at Brands Hatch. Dave Veltz rejoins in his Porsche. He's taken that over from Callum on board now with Dave Veltz as he comes up towards Druids and he's on uh, tires that have cooled down a little bit the Ferrari actually goes past him up on the inside there and we'll see whether he should be able to get back past him fairly quickly down the hill towards Grand Hill Bend now this used to be a flat out corner nowadays taken with a fairly hefty break before they go into that one Kelvin Burt meanwhile down there in pit lane yeah talking to the Par Motorsport engineers just relaying details on how the car's handling that can then be fed through to Marino as he gets into the groove on his first couple of laps. Bobby Burden Row, four seconds down on race leader Reimer, chasing hard. He's right behind the Marcus of Shane Bland and Shane Lynch. And as they come through Sterlings, he should be able to pass them on the way down to Clearways. Should be fairly simple there, just uh, on acceleration. The Ultima coming through, the Ferrari, and then Dave Welts, who hasn't managed to get past that Ferrari yet, but could have an opportunity here down into Sterlings. He outbreaks him down the inside. Classic uh, overtaking here at Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix loop and now he goes chasing after the Ultima. Turbo's on the flat six Porsche at full boost as he whizzes past the normally aspirated Chevy engines Ultima. Straight by he goes. Here's the battle for six. Steve Hyde in the black and yellow Tuscan chasing Mark Sumter. Looks to the inside at clearways. Oh, just avoids the little contact that would have spun Sumter out into the gravel. Still has a good exit from Clearways though, and he should be able to complete the move on the run towards Paddock Hill Bend. There's Steve Hyde on the inside in the yellow and black car, and as we said, he makes the move stick at the next corner, Paddock Hill Bend, so he's up into sixth. There's the NCK pit crew, there's Jeff Lister, and uh, welcome return to the championship from them. They've been racing in the series for the last three or four years. Robin Liddell going well in that car, battling here with Martin Short in another TBR. And the Bland and Lynch markers trying desperately to stay out of the way, but on the track. Yes, battle between GT and GTO. Remember that blue and green TVR is in the GTO class. The yellow Marcos is in the GT class. Yeah, good point. They're racing for overall position, but different point scoring, of course. In comes the ultimate. Ed Sharp in trouble in the closing stages. What a shame. They really need a good run to get some development work done. They belts in second place in the Porsche. And a long gap back to Marino Franchitti in third spot. Robin Liddell flying back up the order in the Marcus. He's fourth overall. Martin Short in fifth place there. He just saw that move happen on the last lap, and he really is easing away from Short quite comfortably. But despite all the chasers, it's still Bobby Verdon Row out front. Marino Franchitti leading in the GTO class, but he's got to watch out because behind this yellow Marcos is that second place in GTO, Martin Short, and he's been putting in some very quick laps. He's gradually closing up. Yeah, certainly the Marcus is closing, and that means Short must be as well. Passing Shane Lynch and chasing the Jones brothers as we ride with Bobby Verdon Row over the Dingledale chicane. Yeah, I bet that car's a nice handful there as it flies over the top. We saw the Ultima crawling round, so Ed Sharp made it out of the pits for, well, not quite one more lap. Bobby Verdon Row gets through safely. Yes, there is the Ultima. It has finally called a halt to proceedings. But here's the battle for second place overall. Dave Welch in the Porsche now under attack from Robin Liddell in the Marcos. Behind him, Marino Franchitti and Martin Short. This is the battle for the GTO class. And that TVR definitely closing up. Here we go. Battle for second then. The yellow Marcus moving to the outside on the approach to Hawthorne's. The very fast right-hander. And there's no contest really as Robin Liddell takes the place relatively easily. Welch a little wide but keeps it all on the tarmac. Robin, ex single season man, reinventing himself as a sports car star, raced in the British GT Championship and the European Le Mans Series this year with success at Donington Park. 
through Dingle Dell and past the stationary car of his teammate Chris Marries. Yeah, let's see what happened here. Here is Chris Marries as he came up towards Dingle Dell. Oh, he put a wheel on the grass as he turned in and that meant that he couldn't get it sorted out at all. Just dived straight into the gravel trap and unfortunately dug down before he got back on the grass. Matt Turner in the race overalls with the Parmed Sport crew, all looking a little bit worried, and perhaps they've got reason to. Marino Franchitti under great pressure from the experienced Martin Short. This is Marino's first year as a GT racer. Short's got plenty of experience in this championship and with these cars. Yeah, look at the way he hopped over the chicane at Singledale. Martin Short is really fired up, and they haven't won a race yet with this car. The Tuscan, the other Tuscan has won in GTO, but this car has not. And yet they are flying here. Marino frankidi has got a real job on his hands to keep them behind. Important test for Marino as well. The team, I'm sure, would feel that Kelvin Burke would be a safe pair of hands in this situation. And Marino needs to prove the same thing, even if he can't hold off the TVR as Short makes the move down the inside. Marino has to give a, a good account of himself here, and he does so. Short takes the lead, though. It was the quickest car in practice, and it still seems to be the quickest car with a race setup. The Tuscan R's are running well here. Steve Hyde in the other car, challenging Adam Simmons for sixth place overall. And it looks to go to the outside rather than the inside into Paddock Hill Bend. It's harder to do that. Now he might be able to cut back on the inside on the approach to Druid. Yeah, just got up there. I think he should be able to take the place into Druid. Good move from Steve Hyde. A little bit of a disappointing run for the Rymer team for Harlow. But, uh, well, it's delight down there in the pits for Steve Hyde's crew and Dennis Leach. Oh, that's Godfrey Jones uh, spinning the Porsche at Hawthorne Bend. And it looks like he's got a punctured left rear. And that's what will have thrown him off there. And Ben, out of Pilgrim's drop, that's a high-speed approach to that corner as well. Worrying moments. Yes, that must have been fairly scary. Meanwhile, the TVR crew are looking out for their man, Bobby Verdon Rowe, as he comes round to take victory in the TVR. Yeah, Michael Kane hanging over the pit wall with the rest of them and still no sign of the safety car. Surely this one's in the bag for them. At long last, they're starting to break their jinx. They have been fast, but so unfortunate this year. Finally at Brands Hatch, it all comes good around Sterlings and out of Clearways for the final time. The chequered flag waves, nearly a minute up on second place, a dominant victory for the TVR. That's the second win of the season for the Speed 12 and the GTO car. The Tuscan R of Martin Short looks as though it's going to win in GTO despite Marino Franchini's flying attempts through the chicane. Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit, a wonderful venue and a great race despite six cars failing to make it round lap one. TVR victorious over Marcus and Porsche in the GTs and Tuscans first and third in the GTO class. But the last word surely must go to Vernon Rowe, the winner. And I can't tell you how, how proud I am of the boys for putting it together considering it's an all British car, engine, everything is TVR, it's brilliant. Now watching you coming up behind the Porsche, you were really giving them a good run for their money. Well I was just sort of setting him up and I thought he's not going to fall for this one and blow me down he did. Sorry Marino. <laughs> Should come Tuscan racing more often. Their second win in a row moves the TVR pair into second place ahead of the Viper, just six points shy of the GT Championship lead. In the GTO category, Kelvin Burt and Marino Franchitti have a 27-point advantage, but it's closing up in the battle behind. Well, that's it for another Power Tour meeting from Brands Hatch. Now, Tim, we're halfway through the season. What can we see in the Formula 3s? Well, it was great to see Derek Hayes finally get a victory after all those pole positions, but it was that man, Takuma Sato, again. Good recovery drive in the first race and storming win in the second. And, Michael, what a GT race. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say, from my point of view, pretty one-sided for TVR. Obviously, lucky. I was getting the win. Yeah, Tim's saying lucky. I was getting the win, and uh, Martin Schoen, the GTO, obviously doing extremely well with his. And uh, sorry to see, obviously, Mike and Dave not finish, and, uh, and me. Tim, Tim and Rob. But, uh, yeah, no, it looks good for the points for us in the championship. Well, at least we know Dave's all right. Thank you very much, boys. Well, the next round of the Power Tour package is going to be in the Midlands at Donington Park. So you can see it then in Motorsport on 4. Motorsport on 4 from the Denmark Speedway next Saturday morning at 7. But back to today and Transworld Sport is up next.